Turn left. Turn left. There it is. There it is. There it is. Folks, you're not looking live. If you're in downtown Springfield, it appears right now a tornado is on the ground. 911, the signs recorded. What's your emergency? I think we've had a tornado hit one of the commercial buildings. I just, we just got hit by the tornado. I have wires everywhere. Two houses down on the corner of George Street. There's people trapped. Please. We have an emergency on our hands, and so I have declared a state of emergency across the entire Commonwealth. The search and rescue teams are out. We have called out the National Guard. People uh, need to stay off the streets. People have been injured, the damage is extensive. June 1st, 2011, a date that's etched in the lives of countless people in western Massachusetts, a day that changed the face of the Pioneer Valley as we know it. We saw it just come through the parking lot and we could see the trees just being ripped off from their tops and hitting cars. I was walking down the street and I saw the whole tornado, the whole clouds, me and her go like this and we started running down the street. I saw the funnel and I saw debris twirling around. It sounded like a big heavy wind and a lot of banging. Just You can hear the debris hitting cars, windows, alarms started going off. All I did was close my eyes. There was so much dust and glass. I just, and it was getting so Sucked out. You could feel it. You, we, we just huddled in a corner and bawled. We didn't really know um, what to expect or what was going to happen. I don't know how to deal with this because it's not fair. 70 minutes. That's all it took for an F3 tornado to carve a path of devastation so large it could be seen from space. The twister touched down in Westfield and traveled 39 miles before dying off in Sturbridge. The storm killed three people, injured dozens of others, and left nothing but destruction in its wake. This thing hit at 4.37 p.m. If this thing had hit at 2.37 p.m., all our kids would have been in school. Yeah. If it hit at 4.37 a.m., we would have all been asleep. And thank God, I mean, God works in mysterious ways. Nobody in Springfield, nobody got killed. I mean, we had about uh, 40 injuries that required, you know, serious injury required hospitalization. And that was what was driving me during this whole time when we were going 24 7. But the first 24 to 72 hours a day, we were in, we were in uh, search and rescue. We were in triage. And I kept asking my, my updates, what's the count? No one yet found a uh, uh, deceased or dead. And I just. Thank God. That's what's remarkable about this, isn't it? Because when you look at the fury, the hit of this thing. June 1st, 4.37 p.m. The tornado crossed over the Memorial Bridge and touched down in Springfield. The storm caused widespread damage from the city's south end to East Forest Park, destroying community landmarks and leveling entire neighborhoods. It was surreal and it was like a war zone. Buildings were torn to shreds. The city immediately went into search and rescue mode. The Mass Mutual Center became a shelter for hundreds of people that first night. First responders worked straight through the evening into the early hours of the morning. I had uh, 32 to 33 direct reports, all city, state officials, hospitals, utilities, volunteer, all there. And we would go one by one, very early in the morning. What occurred the night before, troubleshoot who's helping who, the plan of attack, then when it was people and when FEMA eventually started to, uh, to come in. After forming a plan of attack, city leaders and emergency personnel took to the streets. People not only want that help, but they, they want you there to you know, put their ar your arm around their shoulder, that you care. And I think a lot of the mobile truck units we had out there through the R Salvation Army, American Red Cross, our fire department, police, it wasn't only a, a, a beacon of, uh, of food or information. It was a beacon of hope. It was a beacon of human contact. Yeah. And, and that somebody was there. Uh, that you're going to be okay. Yeah. We're going to help you out. Now, a year later, Mayor Dominic Sarno takes to the street again, reflecting on what was lost, but more than anything, reflecting on the resiliency of the people of Springfield. Let's talk about this, this piece of property. This was really a hub of positive youth and community activity, not only for the south end, but for the downtown, kids in the downtown area in Lower Forest Park. So it's, uh, you know, it's very heart-wrenching to see this. It's been a, a second home to thousands and thousands of kids for decades. And it's just, it's, it's, hor it's just horrible what happened. And uh, I, I don't know how to calculate that what the impact it's having on, on the youth in this area. The heart of a neighborhood blown away in an instant. 
The storm hit with dozens of children and staff still inside the South End Community Center. It got all the kids out of the gym, got them down into the basement to safety, and then just uh, prayed for the best. We had to actually hold the front door shut. We didn't have enough time to lock the front door. A miracle that no one was hurt, but the building was almost completely destroyed. The roof was blown off, and many of the walls were reduced to rubble. Every time I pass the building, I, it, it brings me back. It, it, it's still so surreal that this happened only a year ago. A year ago, the building housed four full-size gyms and a boxing ring, plus places for young people and the community to gather. Now, offices are located on Howard Street, and programs for children are scattered across the community. So it has been a blow for the kids. It's been a blow uh, for us to be go from a centralized to a decentralized organization to have to have satellite sites all around the city. So it has been a trying endeavor, but we're getting through. Plans are underway to build a new community center at the site where the former Gemini plant once stood. Although it will be several years before that becomes a reality, the staff is following the example of the kids and learning to develop a fighting spirit. I figure if you can get through what you got through a year ago today, you can probably get through anything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely feel, though, that the staff, the children, the community, uh, Springfield as a whole has been very resilient. Boxers mentalities. We stick together. We're a team. We have to stay together. And we, and we, and we fight together, literally and figuratively. We fight together. So we're not giving up. We don't quit. Boxers don't quit. And, and the kids know that. And just a matter of us getting back on our feet and finding out where we go from here. The fighting spirit enveloped the whole city during the weeks and months after the storm hit. The old boxing ring was here, and I think people thought, hey, you know, Springfield was, was against the rope. The haymaker was coming. Time to turn out the lights in Springfield. Miraculously, the exact opposite happened. People were resilient. Neighbor helping neighbor. People were rallying. People felt good felt proud about their Springfield. And, uh, I mean, nobody wants these devastating weather disasters, but unbelievable. And that's what kept us going when, you you know, you were dead tired, and he said, that's it, I, I, I gotta take a break. Then you'd run into somebody that, they had no house, and you were able to give them water or something. I guess what strikes me about this is, I always thought the strength of Springfield, especially when you go way, way back, was its neighborhoods. Yes. That's what defined the city. Yes. And do you think this brought, to some extent, it brought those neighborhoods, they were neighborhoods again. It brought it, it strengthened them. And you go East Forest Park, fringe of 16 acres, look at the massive rebuilding of houses that has occurred there. Yeah. People, their neighborhood. Yeah. This is not getting me out of my neighborhood. I'm staying and I'm coming back bigger, better, and stronger. Stronger thanks to neighbors and strangers working together. right up the road so I saw all the destruction and it's great to actually to be able to help and able to clear away some of my neighborhood. It's hard so many people can't you know get around can't move stuff themselves so it's nice to go out and help people. It's actually really comforting that when it first happened all the neighbors were you know running around making sure everybody was okay. It feels good to help people. It feels amazing. It's like it, it feels like you're helping out family because these people they're our neighbors. I just like to see smiles on people's faces. Honestly, it's the greatest feeling in the world. I enjoy every minute of what I have done so far and working with a bunch of people that I just met. I do not know anybody here. None of those people whatsoever. I feel so accomplished, and I love to see what the homeowner thinks after they see it, and they're like, wow, I don't, that feels so good. It makes me feel wonderful that I've been you with me. <laughs> And that they are too. No, it really does. A spirit of the community and determination. Both would be stretched to their limits as people began to realize just how widespread the damage from the tornado really was. When I saw the South End, it couldn't get any worse than this. But then you go out to Island Pond Road and go, oh my God, this is this is ten times worse. Was there ever a time in this whole thing you said, God, this can't be Springfield? I thought at that point in time when I got to the Island Pond um, uh, Road area, part of me, uh, thick and back, it was unrecognizable. And Dave, you're right, you just thought, is, is this Springfield? It was like Armageddon had hit. I mean, house is completely wiped out. Trees completely gone. Shroom debris all over the place. Uh, there was a lot of debris all over the place, a lot of broken windows, and the siding was all missing off the house. I was in shock. I just, just still couldn't believe it. Even now, it's almost a year later, and I still can't believe it. Jim Graham and his family have lived at this home right off of Island Pond Road for the last 13 years. 
After the storm hit, his house was demolished. Walked through the debris and this is what I found. A house like this, garage is gone. This was the kitchen. You have stuff from the bedroom into the bathroom. Each time I walk in here, I just break down and look at it. This is our home. These are our things. Yes, they're replaceable, but it's still our home that we built. With so much devastation all around, emotions were running high. I don't know whether to cry, no, scream, beat my head against the wall, or hope to God that this never happens again. The Grams, like so many, decided to rebuild. This was their home and their community they were going to stay. Less than two months later, the first walls of their new home were going up. One, two, two three, 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 raise the house! <laughs> this is just truly amazing for where this is. Being able to see this step, we're moving in the right direction. Being part of the rebuilding process was important to the Grams. Jim served as the general contractor on his home, with his wife and daughter getting in on the action, too. Oh! Yay! Nail by nail, board by board, raising these walls and raising their spirits along the way. The goal? To be around their dining room table by Thanksgiving. My husband's a very strong person, thankfully, because the first week I was a mess, and he stayed strong and positive and started doing the next step. So very optimistic, and it'll get done. We definitely have a lot to be thankful for, and Thanksgiving would be, definitely would be a good holiday to be in the house. While they didn't make it for Thanksgiving, they did make it home for Christmas. Best Christmas present I could ask for. The family able to gather together and reflect on their journey and on the strength of each other. We've had our share of stressfulness and ups and downs this past six months, big time, even more so, but we've pulled through. Now, a year later, the house is only 75% complete. And after that, do the garage and then eventually start doing some landscaping. Mm -hmm. So hopefully by next year it'll be all done. And through it all, Jim continues to count his blessings. The most important thing is we're all alive. That's, you know, we figured we could rebuild the house and, or move or whatever, but we're all safe. A short distance from Island Pond Road stands what remains of Cathedral High School, an anchor in the community and a fixture of learning since 1883. The school took a direct hit, and the building that once shaped the minds of generations of students is now nothing more than an empty shell. It was almost surreal um, to think that the school I'd gone to, my grandparents, my parents had all gone to, was destroyed. For many of our teachers, their entire uh, educational career is Cathedral High School. So to have all of that change so radically in a matter of five minutes. John Miller has been walking the halls of Cathedral for over eight years, serving as principal, and before that as a teacher. He was meeting with a group of faculty when the tornado tore through. So we stayed against the wall, some of us got down on the floor, um, and um, kind of hoped for the best. We didn't really hear the, the full tornado coming, but we felt the wind. It went right through the corridors. Once the storm passed, devastation remained. But that uh, courtyard, as you saw, was in shambles. I mean, uh, the trees were ripped out and down. All the glass was smashed. There were curtains and blinds hanging through the empty windows. Um, it looked like a war zone. But among the rubble, a symbol of hope. Now, the only thing that was really untouched was a chapel, which was great. And I, I did stop in there for, and to see what uh, condition the chapel was in. And uh, inside it was untouched. The, the Blessed Sacrament was in place in the tabernacle. But with the rest of the school destroyed, students had a long and uncertain road ahead. Yeah, I was very anxious because, I mean, being a senior, um, not knowing where I was going to be finishing off my, senior, my final year at Cathedral, um, I know I didn't want to go anywhere else besides Cathedral as well. Students finished out the year at Elms College in Chicopee and started the new one at the vacant Memorial School in Wilbraham. Well, we all kind of came with the, uh, the belief we can make it work. We're going to make it work. Even parents stopped by and they said, geez, this isn't so bad after all. And it'll work. It'll, it'll work for you. So I think we all band together as administration and faculty, students and parents. Proving that the heart and soul of a school is not a building, but the people who walk the halls. Despite all of the tornado and the efforts to try to like, rebuild and get back to that, I think Cathedral is just, as a whole, just still been a community. It doesn't really matter where we were. The storm also caused severe damage to Dryden Memorial and Elias Brookings schools. Brookings has been standing since 1925 and will be rebuilt and upgraded to meet current education standards. Dryden will also get an upgrade, but will only have one wing or six classrooms rebuilt. Of course, rebuilding and cleanup come with a hefty price tag. 
one that's taking a toll on the city's finances. You got to remember, we, we've done this all on the city's dime yeah. right now. It's right been all, yeah. all in the city, and the state's been a great partner. FEMA, and we continue to work with them. Um, you know, we're due millions and millions of dollars, not only for uh, reimbursing the budget, but more importantly to rebuild the city. That's the big thing now. Everybody wants to come in and tour and look here and there. The old movie line show me the money. Yeah. You really want to help me? I need that money to come in quicker. We've only got a, a very small portion of the FEMA money to come in on the tornado. Dave, the path that was cut was a hundred, a uh, third through the city, 160,000 cubic yards of debris was taken, cleaned up, at, at a price tag of maybe 15, probably 18 million dollars. Total operations for that was about 23 million dollars. For the whole thing? For, the, for that tornado. 106 million dollars for our, the rebuild we're looking to do. While the city struggles with the cleanup costs, many homeowners are also left wondering how they'll pick up the pieces. Many didn't have insurance and were left without a lot of options. It was very hard. It was, it was hard and it was hopeless. Tammy Golfin lives on King Street. After the storm hit, things looked hopeless. She suffers from diabetes and recently lost her leg. Coupled with economic hardship, the damage caused by the tornado seemed insurmountable. We couldn't fill out for credit because we couldn't pay it back. That's where Rebuilding Together Springfield comes in, a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping low-income homeowners improve their living conditions. We're there to fill that need where if they did not have homeowners insurance or inadequate insurance, that's where we fit that need. Over the past year, the organization has helped 30 homeowners repair the damage from the storm. Thousands of volunteers from all over answering the call to rebuild. And I look around and there were so many people. It's always a good feeling to do something good for somebody else. I mean, what else would you be doing? Nobody's complaining. Everybody's just happy to get the job done. A job filled with excitement. I'm excited. I, I am just hand clapping, foot stomping, yelling, screaming, run through the house excited. And a determination to continue to the end. We're here for the whole long term. We've been here 20 years. We'll be here a lot more than 20 more. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's exactly how one could describe the fortitude and commitment people impacted by the tornado have displayed time and time again. Proving that when it comes to persevering through hardship, nothing is impossible. I'll tell you, you have that word adversity. Yeah. Two things can come out of how you deal with adversity. Do you show strong and positive can-do character? Or do you just show negative character of woe is me, what could happen next. The people of Springfield resolutely showed that character of I'm not down. And a matter of fact, we're coming back up and we're going to beat you. The ultimate sacrifice. She gave her life to save her daughter. A mother's love put to the test. Plus, building up what was blown down. That very debris and destruction that initially divided us has brought us together more than we ever were before the storm. The willing hands that are helping people heal. Nobody but nobody beats energy savers of America's prices on roofing, siding, or windows. Visit our new showroom on Boston Road in Wilbraham or call energy savers of America today. Nobody beats our prices. Nobody. You never know what to expect living in New England, but what you can expect from fuel services is a realistic alternative way to lower your energy costs and keep your family warm this winter. I'm Steve Chase, and I'm talking about propane, the exceptional energy. It's green, safe, non-toxic, produces less carbon monoxide and fewer greenhouse gases. All that makes this option a practical choice for your home and budget. Call fuel services and let's talk propane. ABC 40 has won more AP awards than all local TV stations combined. Powerful breaking news coverage, cutting-edge journalism, hard-hitting investigations. When it comes to working for you, only one local TV station is getting the job done. ABC 40, the most honored in Western Mass. At Kelly Fredette, we know what some of you went through during the tornado last year. We experienced it too. We helped rebuild many homes with quality materials that you deserve. Kelly Fredette can help you rebuild your community by providing the lumber and building materials delivered right to your home. We'll help you every step of the way with our experienced salespeople and our dedicated job site support team. Kelly Fredette, our true reliable service, has stood the test of time for over 60 years. KellyFredette.com. Get ABC 40 News anytime.
anywhere, right on your smartphone. Download the new WGTV ABC 40 app from your app store. Get instant local breaking news with push notifications. Watch full video clips and comment on any story and tell us what you think. Plus, share your favorite stories via text message and Facebook. 24-7 access to local traffic and up to the second weather updates. Watch ABC 40 newscasts live while they're streaming. Stay connected. Download the new ABC 40 app today. Get the kids up, get them dressed, make breakfast, take the dog out, get the kids out the door, go to work, get home, make dinner, put the kids to bed, and get ready to do it all over again. I'm ABC 40 Shannon Heggie, and we get it. Life is hectic, and we won't waste any more of your time. Just give us 11 minutes, and we'll give you everything you need to know. 11 at 11. It's 11 minutes of nonstop news every night on ABC 40 in HD. Get the news and get to bed. 11 at 11 on ABC 40. Nobody but nobody beats energy savers of America's prices. On kitchens, baths, and additions, visit our new showroom on Boston Road in Wilbraham. Or call energy savers of America today. Nobody beats our prices. Nobody. 911, the sign's recorded. What's your emergency? A tornado just blew through here on Union Street, 6 The tornado intensified as it moved from Westfield into West Springfield, causing heavy damage to buildings and homes. Well, I have wires everywhere. And in some cases, causing them to completely collapse. There's two houses down on the corner of George Street. There's people trapped. Please, get George? Up in here. Uh, George, Union, and Sprague Street, right between the two. One of those homes belonged to the Guerrero family. And trapped inside was 40-year-old Angelica and her 15-year-old daughter. Instinctively, just tried to get inside and find them and, and, you know, just make it the best of them. Hope, you know, prayed that they were alive. But as friends and neighbors tried to get to them, it was too late. Angelica had sacrificed her life by laying on top of her daughter in the bathtub as the two floors above came down on them. I remember, like, being trapped down there. Your mother was the hero in all of this. Yeah. Which I guess is not too surprising to you guys, is it? No. She gave her life to save her daughter. She made the greatest sacrifice. And, you know, she's an angel, for sure. A block away on Main Street, another life lost too soon. You better get an ambulance down here to draw the life and everything else. The big tree just come down and yeah, close the car. 23-year-old Sergey Livchin died when a tree fell onto his car. I couldn't even believe it. I was so, like, in shock that, I don't know, I just, I was so scared. And finally find, finding out that my cousin was dead, it was just shocking. While much of the shock has disappeared, a year later, the community is still focused on recovery. And that's really where we come in. We are there to identify the unmet needs and, and to make sure that those individuals who have unmet needs and still have challenges um, get their issues resolved as well. Raising Hope is the designated long-term recovery group for West Springfield. While many homeowners are squared away, some are still struggling with insurance and getting their needs met. We have caseworkers who work with individuals all through the process of identifying what their needs are, finding the uh, appropriate connection to meet those needs. In addition to meeting the needs, the organization is trying to offer hope. It's worked with volunteers to create a reflective garden where people can go to find peace and solitude. And we just wanted it to be a nice welcoming space where they can stop and sit in a place that's pretty and has nice flowers and shade trees and they can relax and you know, just uh, think about the future and, and maybe reflect on the past. A place to reflect and rest after a year full of so much loss and hardship. Helping hands and willing hearts. Why do we keep going? Because there are still people who need help. Finding the strength to recover after a devastating blow. It's just been a hell of a year. Across the valley, the town of Wilbraham is still dealing with damage from more than just the June 1st tornado. We took three hits. The tornado got us on the other side of the house. The microburst got us over here, and then the snowstorm in October took out the front of the house. The tornado damaged some 400 homes. And just when it seemed the town was making progress, a microburst hit less than a few weeks later. 
That thing, if you, I don't know if you're going to see it, is the one that came down right on top of the mobile home. Heather Mercier was one of the homeowners who got a double dose of weather. Her house on Tinkham Road was severely damaged by the tornado. And when the microburst hit, a tree fell on the mobile home she was living in while her house was being repaired. You could walk right underneath when the tree came down, the way the roots and, and the whole business. People could walk right in. It was like a cave. It was, it was just, it wasn't realistic, you know. A year later, the scars from the storm still remain, and like many homeowners, she's taking it one day at a time. Fortunately, there's something to do every day because we're not, you know, we're not back where we want to be, especially with the outside right now. It's just been a hell of a year. Down the road, the sound of chainsaws fill the air as volunteers work to clear branches. And haul wood. It takes one man and two women to push this. Members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints in Springfield and Ludlow are out in force almost every Saturday helping homeowners. They started after the storm hit and have been working ever since. Hearing people's stories about their seconds in the tornado and seeing the destruction at their homes impelled us with a desire to help. One, two, three. It got to where sleep and eating were distractions and my regular job was just something I got through so that I could get out there and, and visit with the neighbors and help them. They've cleared 100 properties to date and put in over 3,500 man hours. They don't intend to stop anytime soon. Why do we keep going? Because there are still people who need help. We'll keep at it as long as we have people who need the help and the hands that are willing to give it. Most of the the area in the back here uh, is all had all been conservation land, and now one tree is left. One of those cleared properties belongs to Susan Staples, who lives on West Colonial Road in Wilbraham. My whole backyard was covered with trees. We have had <laughs> 37 large pine uh, trees, uh, probably 80 to 100 feet tall. With so many trees, she wasn't sure what she was going to do. Then I found out that nothing was covered except the one tree that had hit uh, an outbuilding. So I knew that that would have to come out of our reserve, which was basically our retirement. And uh, I was just really depressed. <laughs> I didn't know what we were going to do. But then help arrived. They knocked on the door and said, we know you're by yourself, we'll do what we can to help. In fact, we'll stay until the work is done. I am forever indebted to them. They were wonderful. And it's that gratitude that has Susan paying it forward. She founded a nonprofit organization called Trees Bring Hope. You know, it is a trauma to go through something like that, but they say the best way to deal with the trauma is to get up and do something. What we wanted to do was to kind of give people a boost and say, here's a new tree, and it's a gift. They've planted over 100 trees on private property. Our environment is changed, and everyone is trying to, you know, get it back. <laughs> Hopefully make it look better. Seeing a new tree in the middle of that empty lot or in some place in your yard gives you the hope that they'll be back. One of those trees made it into Heather Mercier's yard. This is from Trees Bring Hope, so I thought that was very nice. A full circle of neighbors helping neighbors. A wild dream without an end. The best way to describe it is, is, uh, is a nightmare. A new awakening as communities work to rebuild. It has helped us really, really get together and just be a stronger community than we ever have been before. We all know living in Massachusetts means living with extreme weather. Are you expected to know what your insurance covers you for in the event of weather damage? Axia Insurance and our Bella Insurance can help. At Axia, exceptional value means we provide the best knowledge and the best service. Axia Insurance. What do you look for in a bank? Longevity. Financial strength. Investment in the community charitable giving and people you know and trust we're proud to partner with you and your neighbors to build stronger communities many of your friends and neighbors find what they're looking for at Westfield Bank we invite you to take a look too at Kelly Verdette 
We know what some of you went through during the tornado last year. We experienced it too. We helped rebuild many homes with quality materials that you deserve. Kelly Fredette can help you rebuild your community by providing the lumber and building materials delivered right to your home. We'll help you every step of the way with our experienced salespeople and our dedicated job site support team. Kelly Fredette, our true reliable service, has stood the test of time for over 60 years. KellyFredette.com. Get the kids up, get them dressed, make breakfast, take the dog out, get the kids out the door, go to work, get home, make dinner, put the kids to bed, and get ready to do it all over again. I'm ABC 40 Shannon Heggie, and we get it. Life is hectic, and we won't waste any more of your time. Just give us 11 minutes, and we'll give you everything you need to know. 11 at 11. It's 11 minutes of nonstop news every night on ABC 40 in HD. Get the news and get to bed. 11 at 11 on ABC 40. ABC 40 has won more AP awards than all local TV stations combined. Powerful breaking news coverage, cutting-edge journalism, hard-hitting investigations. When it comes to working for you, only one local TV station is getting the job done. ABC 40, the most honored in Western Mass. We all know living in Massachusetts means living with extreme weather. Are you expected to know what your insurance covers you for in the event of weather damage? Axia Insurance and our Bella Insurance can help. At Axia, exceptional value means we provide the best knowledge and the best service. Axia Insurance. He said the tornado's coming, it's coming right for the barn, which it did. When it hit, it sounded like, they say, a freight train uh, coming through the yard. We heard the tree come down. We thought the cars were getting thrown outside. When we went outside, there was devastation everywhere. It was shocking to see how much damage was done in such a short period of time. It was devastating. It was like, oh my God, I can't believe that all of this is really gone. Everywhere you look in the town of Munson, you see a stark reminder of what happened a year ago. Dealing with the recovery from the tornado has been part of the daily routine for town administrator Gretchen Neger. Hard to believe it's been a year. It's real hard to believe, and, and I, it seems much, much more recent. It's been very consuming. I think people are, are growing tired, um, just physically and mentally, they're tired. Munson suffered anywhere from 30 to $35 million in property damage. That's housing and town offices. Slowly but surely, things are getting back to normal. Well, I think if you drive in the neighborhoods that were affected, you can see some very beautiful new homes that have been constructed to replace those that were damaged. And, and I think that's encouraging. Moving forward, uh, how, how much longer do you think it's going to take to get, get the town back on its feet, back to where it was on uh, May 31st of last year? Uh, realistically, I think you're looking at a total recovery time of three to five years. You know, every day there's, there are tornado things, you know, related to the tornado that have to be done. And realistically, I can see now that it will take that long. You see some resiliency in the people of Munson, I guess. I think it goes, we, I've had this debate, and I think it goes beyond resiliency. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's a real, they're, they're very, they're gritty, I think is the word. They're, they have stamina, they, they can take it, and they're almost defiant in their effort to rebuild. It. They're not going to get knocked down by this or by any other disaster that may befall them. Neighbors helping neighbors, that's what we call it. And wherever uh, we were needed for each other, we came out. Karen King looks out over the now barren landscape from her home in Munson. She's been a central part of her community for 35 years and has seen a lot in that time, but nothing like the June 1st tornado. That night after the tornado, oh my God, I mean, that place was lit up like a Christmas tree and the, the um, planes going overhead and it was just like you were just in a war zone. Oh, I had 13 people sleeping with me that night. It reminds me of 9-11 that night, you mm. know, that they just, everybody had dust all over them and they just didn't know really everyone was in shock. The lives of so many changed that day. Homes lost, dreams broken, and neighborhoods destroyed. And as help arrived, so did the questions. We thought that all of a sudden, you know, FEMA and the government was going to Red Cross come over and take over and we were going to be okay. And we quickly found out that isn't their job. It's our job to make us okay. That job turned out to be an overwhelming one. With every agency giving out different information, Karen knew there had to be an easier way. So she took to the streets. 
everybody was asking me the same questions and I was getting information, I put it on a flyer and that's how it started. And I was walking um, up a street one day and a lady called me said, oh, you're such an angel because I was standing in the street. That's why street angels. Those street angels, as they're called, have been out ever since, working with other organizations to make sure homeowners have the information and resources they need to rebuild. And it's just overwhelming yeah. for them. And it's a full-time job, frankly. So, and especially for the folks that are older, they're not used to this. They don't understand all the different things to do, and it's very frustrating. So sometimes they just shut down, and then there's other folks that decided not to go back that couldn't emotionally go back to their homes. The best way to describe it is is uh, is a nightmare, basically. It's something you wouldn't wish on anyone, something I would never wish on anyone. Joe Kucher and his wife Kelly are some of those homeowners. The tornado tore off the roof of their State Street home. And if that wasn't enough, Mother Nature unleashed a downpour. Well, the roof had come off, and then it rained. So it was mostly like mold and, you know, water damage. It wasn't so much as like stuff got damaged. It was like just the water in the walls. And whatever was in the attic was just gone. The Coochers have insurance to cover the cost of repair, but they keep getting the runaround from their mortgage company, leaving them to pay out of pocket. So you're just constantly trying to catch up, and you're spending paychecks instead of insurance money. It was during that catch-up time the Coochers met Karen and the Street Angels. Immediately, the Heaven Sent volunteers teamed up with the Circle of Faith to help the Coochers rebuild. I don't know how it all came together. It was like a big family, just like meshed very well and everybody was, um, they didn't care who you were. It was, it was good, like my daughter said. It was just people who didn't know you trying to help you out and I would hope someday I can return a favor. And the community is so small, and it's like you do know a lot of people in the community, um, and they are. They're just they're caring people who want to help you. It's just a lot of good people coming together. There's still a long road ahead for the Coochers, and while they look forward to the future, there's a pang of sadness for what once was. It's a little tough to see all the old houses disappear. To see all these newer houses go up in the neighborhood, it's kind of tough because you remember what it was like walking down the street. While the streets have changed, the community has not. And one thing is evident as you walk through the town. That's the strength of the people. But when you look back on that day, um... And think about it now, almost a year later, what goes through your mind? Um, it sent shivers up my spine, frankly, just thinking about it. Um, that we didn't know any of this would happen, but we also didn't know how resilient we were and what was about to come. It has helped us really, really get together and just be a stronger community than we ever have been before. At the center of the town's rebuilding efforts is the First Church of Munson. It served as a gathering place for storm victims and became a hub for volunteers to coordinate their efforts. Members of the congregation served more than 30,000 meals those first several days, despite the fact that the church itself sustained heavy damage. A lot has been fixed in the years since the tornado, but as chair of the church's board of trustees, Suzanne Kelly, told me, a lot of work remains to be done. Your first thoughts when you saw what happened here? Uh... Oh my, all the work we're going to have to do. It wasn't, a, it wasn't any great sadness because I could see that nobody was hurt, um, that we could do it again, but it was just, oh goodness, <laughs> here we go and um, just have to get started, which we did. And although it looks really nice, um, it had its share of damage. We had had these uh, stained glass windows repaired about 10 years ago, all re-leaded. Every one of them held. They did. Every single one. So despite all of the um, strong winds that were in here, the fact that we had had them re with uh, pl plexiglass on the outside, they held. But we had over $30,000 worth of damage to our organ. Mm -hmm. um, the, this is a historic Johnson organ, and it was the dust swirling around in the building, and it just settled in the organ. So that has not been repaired and won't be until all the dust from reconstruction is finished. Now up in the balcony, um, you can see the temporary fix that we did. Uh, and we removed all of our pews because at first uh, we had to have structural analysis to see if the balcony was okay, and it is. So it didn't have any problem. There was some torquing, and you can see that we had uh, plaster that came off over there. The front of the church was hit the hardest. The steeple was destroyed. We have not cleaned up a thing because there's no need to. 
All of our stained glass windows um, from here and the ones that were blown out um, are at stained glass resources in Hamden and they're being restored. So we're going to have um, all of this. Our, our architect is URS out of Connecticut um, and we're going to have the entire thing rebuilt from the foundation up. So this thing that we're standing in is coming down. It's all coming down. Yeah. Completely. Because it's been torqued. It, uh, it's just not, it's not structurally sound. It's not going to fall on us. Mm -hmm. It's okay to be here. Total damage to the church? The About two million. About two million dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we're insured for six million, so it will be covered. That's good. Um, but still, that doesn't mean that it's going to be easy. How long do you think from this will take until... Well, in July, um, they're starting the destruction, mm -hmm. demolition. And then uh, by Christmas, it's all going to be done, okay. including the painting interior here. Um, you know, things like that are cracked. There are other cracks above the windows, mm -hmm. which, um, not that ceiling one there, but um, right above the windows. And even though the windows held, the plaster got torqued. So this will have to be redone in a lot of ways. It, it doesn't look bad. No. And so that's wonderful. But when you have damage, you just have to have it repaired. This so. really is the cornerstone of the town, isn't it? Well. In, in many ways, just as, as far as when you come into downtown Muncie. Uh, sure. Yeah. From way from Wilbraham, you see the, yeah. um, the used to see the spire. <laughs> You'll see it again. And one of the things we've talked about, I know actually folks here in town and uh, in, you know, the folks in Wilbraham too, but the good that came out of all of this. Oh, yes. People coming together, people helping one another. It was, it was wonderful. The first church of Munson was open for worship the Sunday after the tornado, even though there was a huge hole where the steeple once stood. We got new parishioners who said they'd lived in town, they'd always wondered about coming to this church, but until they came on June 1st and then from then on all through the summer, they just didn't realize what a warm and welcoming place it was, and so they come now. Um, there were people that had gone to our church in the past, but had been, you know, kind of drifted away or whatever, who have returned. So, um, yes, it, it really did bring people together and made people feel that we are a good, strong community. A scarred landscape, places once familiar, now unknown. All of our trees were down. It was hard to recognize the landscape of the whole place. A year later, new growth. I'm looking at the little trees going, you're going to climb those trees someday. <laughs> those branches will get up there, I promise. And new memories for the future. Nobody but nobody beats energy savers of America's prices on roofing, siding, or windows. Visit our new showroom on Boston Road in Wilbraham or call Energy Savers of America today. Nobody beats our prices. Nobody. At Kelly Fredette, we know what some of you went through during the tornado last year. We experienced it too. We helped rebuild many homes with quality materials that you deserve. Kelly Fredette can help you rebuild your community by providing the lumber and building materials delivered right to your home. We'll help you every step of the way with our experienced salespeople and our dedicated job site support team. Kelly Fredette, our true reliable service, has stood the test of time for over 60 years. KellyFredette.com. You never know what to expect living in New England, but what you can expect from fuel services is a realistic alternative way to lower your energy costs and keep your family warm this winter. I'm Steve Chase, and I'm talking about propane, the exceptional energy. It's green, safe, non-toxic, produces less carbon monoxide and fewer greenhouse gases. All that makes this option a practical choice for your home and budget. Call fuel services and let's talk propane. The moment a patient walks through our doors, the healing process begins. At Maplegate Rehab, our team of healthcare professionals are dedicated to helping you achieve a quick and full recovery. We provide a variety of treatments focusing on helping you recover from auto accidents. We truly believe your success is our success. Maplegate Rehab, getting better with you. ABC 40, getting the job done. 
Taking you in-depth into the autism disorder, separating fact from fiction. They call up with guy. Just received a diagnosis. What do I do? Digging deeper to help protect your family from dangerous predators. We are taking calls here in the newsroom, helping you track down whoever is living in your neighborhood. And tracking down tens of thousands of dollars owed to you. For the person out there that got $2,900, good for you. Getting you answers. Getting the job done. Only on ABC 40. Get the kids up, get them dressed, make breakfast, take the dog out, get the kids out the door, go to work, get home, make dinner, put the kids to bed, and get ready to do it all over again. I'm ABC 40 Shannon Heggie, and we get it. Life is hectic, and we won't waste any more of your time. Just give us 11 minutes, and we'll give you everything you need to know. 11 at 11. It's 11 minutes of nonstop news every night on ABC 40 in HD. Get the news and get to bed. 11 at 11 on ABC 40. Nobody but nobody beats energy savers of America's prices. On kitchens, baths, and additions, visit our new showroom on Boston Road in Wilbraham. Or call energy savers of America today. Nobody beats our prices. Nobody. We watched it, and it came around the corner, and we ran. After hitting Munson, the tornado barreled on, ravaging the town of Brimfield. It just went completely silent. There were no birds, no wind. The flag dropped, and we were like, oh, boy, this is different. And then we heard that roar that everybody was talking about. That's not a roar, roar we ever heard of before, so this is different. Then it was as if time stood still. And 5.09, according to all of our broken clocks, it hit here. And, uh, and our life changed. Life changed. The tornado damaged roughly 10% of the homes in Brimfield, including part of the town hall. It caused widespread destruction in the state forest. It also ruined much of the Village Green family campground. The 100-acre forest, once a secluded oasis, is now only a shadow of what it once was. All of our trees were down. It was hard to recognize the landscape of the whole place. The storm destroyed 95 of the 97 camp trailers on site. Most of them were just smashed to smithereens or um, egg beatered into nothing. Leaving one and three quarter million dollars in damage. It was shock, you know. You come out and it's just everything that you thought was in the air is now on the ground, you know. Everything's green and you can't make heads or tails of anything. But it wasn't just one tornado. A second one barreled through just as search and rescue efforts got underway. So there was another one coming, and then there was another one coming. Did and you... some of the EMT people were not leaving their victims. They, they were hunkering down. They didn't care. They didn't care that a tornado was coming. They stood there and helped us get us to safety. One of the campers brought to safety was Rick Rhyme. He and his longtime girlfriend, Virginia Darlow, also known as Ginger, were staying at the Village Green for the summer. They were putting away groceries when the storm hit. I didn't even get a chance to think. Something just told me we're in trouble. Hide. And I grabbed my girl and I threw her in a shower and I closed the door. And as soon as I closed the door, the Winnebago shook once, tipped on its side. And I was just laying on top of her now, holding on to her. And then I got knocked out. It was a nightmare. It just happened so fast. So when the person told me, to not to try to stand up. I said, we got to find Ginger. I don't know what Ginger was. She was in my arms. And then the dog, she walked, she all of a sudden mysteriously appears and starts barking viciously. And I told him to follow her because they said the dog ran. I said, follow her. That's Ginger's dog. She'll probably maybe lead you to where Ginger is. And sure enough, Ginger was still inside the Winnebago. But it took him so long. It took him 15, 20 minutes to climb in there to feel a pulse. And it was too late. It was a tragic way to lose somebody. I mean, it's one thing about losing somebody, but to have them ripped out of your arms when you're trying to hold on to them for their life. A life and a love lost too soon. She was kind and sweet. She wouldn't step on an ant. But loss soon turned into hope as the hours and days passed. People that were um, uh, camping here, uh, a lot of them just went out, got new trailers, parked them in a, a different area and said, OK, I got my rake, let's go. You know, I got a chainsaw, let's use the chipper. We got a little cleanup here, Meg, to do, let's go. Neighbors, people driving by on the road, that even though they couldn't go anywhere, they didn't care, they just came and they wanted to help. Neighbors and strangers becoming lifelong friends. We have a lot more friends 
that's really nice. I mean, we've met people from all over the country. I mean, and they still keep in contact with us. How you doing? What do you need? And when you make friends in a situation like this, they're real keepers. <laughs> because, uh, you know, they're picking up garbage. You know, they're picking up trash and they're picking, you know, they're, and they're working for nothing. A year later, the focus is not on what was lost, but on what remains and what will grow in the future. I didn't suffer half as bad as most of the people in town. Our houses were still standing. You drive down the street, you see somebody's house in the swamp. Right. And you say, oh, you know, you can rebuild it. Yeah, but how do you replace the pictures? How do you replace the toys that you put in the attic? How do you replace your wedding dress that you had tucked away hoping that your daughter will wear? You can't do that. Right. And that's what is more devastating. Um, the environment here, the trees are growing back. They'll grow back and hopefully provide memories for a whole new generation of campers. You look around and you're like, this is where I remember doing this when I was little and I, don't, I can't do that anymore. Like, I used to climb trees and they're gone and, you know, there's no, there's no trees where you can be like, oh yeah, talk to your kids and say, yeah, I used to climb that same tree you're climbing now. But now I'm looking at the little trees going, you're going to climb those trees someday. <laughs> those branches will get up there, I promise. The power of a community. Neighbors helping neighbors, that's what we call it. And wherever uh, we were needed for each other, we came out. Neighbors helping neighbors to achieve the impossible. The power of the people when they pull together. And we all know living in Massachusetts means living with extreme weather. Are you expected to know what your insurance covers you for in the event of weather damage? Axia Insurance and our Bella Insurance can help. At Axia, exceptional value means we provide the best knowledge and the best service. Axia Insurance. What do you look for in a bank? Longevity. Financial strength. Investment in the community charitable giving and people you know and trust we're committed to building strong customer relationships many of your friends and neighbors find what they're looking for at Westfield Bank we invite you to take a look too ABC 40 getting the job done taking you in depth into the autism disorder separating fact from fiction digging deeper to help protect your family from dangerous predators and tracking down tens of thousands of dollars owed to you getting the job done ABC 40 the moment a patient walks through our doors the healing process begins at Maple Gate Rehab our team of healthcare professionals are dedicated to helping you achieve a quick and full recovery we provide a variety of treatments focusing on helping you recover from auto accidents we truly believe your success is our success Maple Gate Rehab getting better with you Get the kids up, get them dressed, make breakfast, take the dog out, get the kids out the door, go to work, get home, make dinner, put the kids to bed, and get ready to do it all over again. I'm ABC 40's Shannon Heggie, and we get it. Life is hectic, and we won't waste any more of your time. Just give us 11 minutes, and we'll give you everything you need to know. 11 at 11. It's 11 minutes of nonstop news every night on ABC 40 in HD. Get the news and get to bed. 11 at 11 on ABC 40. Get ABC 40 News anytime, anywhere, right on your smartphone. Download the new WGGB ABC 40 app from your app store. Get instant local breaking news with push notifications. Watch full video clips and comment on any story and tell us what you think. Plus, share your favorite stories via text message and Facebook. 24-7 access to local traffic and up to the second weather updates. Watch ABC 40 newscasts live while they're streaming. Stay connected. Download the new ABC 40 app today. We all know living in Massachusetts means living with extreme weather. Are you expected to know what your insurance covers you for in the event of weather damage? Axia Insurance and our Bella Insurance can help. At Axia, exceptional value means we provide the best knowledge and the best service. Axia Insurance. The landscape has changed. As the year goes by, we're kind of getting used to the way it looks now. It will become the normal years, you know, in a few more years. A change landscape and lessons learned in the face of adversity. Lessons learned are learned slowly. You know, you, you fight, you, you, you try not to change and, you know, um, it's like learning something new. 
I'm learning new things every day. While the June 1st tornado downed trees and destroyed entire neighborhoods, it could not take away one thing, and that's the fighting spirit of the community. The power of people when they pull together. I call it the butterfly effect now of, of, of just what little, you know, random acts of kindness started into a big event and has caused such a swell of, of volunteerism in the town and, um, and we've really pulled together. While there's still years of work ahead, this last year has proven that neighbors will always be there for each other. Just a lot of good people coming together. I've appreciated more and more that, that everybody's important and that we all need to help each other. Big hearts all over. Big hearts all over. And that when we truly come together, we can achieve the impossible. It's been um, a pretty traumatic year for everyone and I think we all found out that we're just a little bit stronger than we thought we were. I think I'm a little more wiser. I think we're better people because now we have a greater understanding and we pay attention. I think it actually made everybody open the eyes that one day yeah, you do have everything but the next day you might not have nothing. We're pretty tight in town and try to help each other out. You know, we got through it. It was tough. They started giving a lot more and thinking of other people a lot more and uh, helping out to really good and helping to clean up. And families grew closer together, too. People just want to help other people, you know, putting them up in, in their place and taking them in and, and just families working together. And, and that's what it's all about. That's what it should be. Who would have thought that these little random acts of kindness, these, these little things that ever everyone has done um, in this community has made such a difference? I think it makes you realize how fortunate you really are.